What's up, y'all? In this video, we're going to look at one more uh, rational function example, and we're going to see how we can use the sine diagram to help us sketch out a graph without using any technology. Let's get to it. All right, so we're going to sketch a graph for the function g of x, where g of x is equal to 2x minus 3 over x plus 1. And as we mentioned, we're going to use a sine diagram to help us find that solution. So the first thing that we know is that this is going to be some graph where we're going to have some kind of vertical asymptote and we're going to have some kind of vert uh, horizontal asymptote. We know we're going to have our curves. Uh, we've seen our curves like this in the past, but the question now is, are we going to have that or are we going to have a graph that maybe looks more like this purple one, right? So that's what we're going to look at. Uh, and we're going to see where are the horizontal and vertical asymptotes? Where are the intercepts? How do we use a sine diagram to determine if we've got the blue function or if we've got the purple function? As I mentioned before, I always like to find the vertical asymptote first. And to find the vertical asymptote, we said all we have to do is set the denominator equal to zero. So x plus one equals zero. So x equals negative one is the vertical asymptote. So already my quick sketch here is not so hot. Uh, but we do know that this thing is going to be over here somewhere at negative x equals negative 1. So that means all of this stuff is going to have to slide over and we'll have to see what happens with our uh, hor horizontal asymptote as well. In the other videos, we've looked at the horizontal asymptote. That's going to be where we put in really big numbers for our x's right? Because we want to know what happens as we go off to positive and negative infinity. So I'm going to put in a really big number here. Let's say I put in g of 10 million. That's a really big number. So I'm going to have 2 times 10 million minus 3 over 10 million minus 1. Well, for all intents and purposes, again, this 3, this minus 3, oh, this is a plus 1, that minus 3 and that plus 1, they're not really significant in this. But we're going to have 2 times 10 million over 10 million, roughly. Um, and so we're roughly going to get to a value of 2. And if I put a, because if, the, if these things are fairly insignificant and I simplify out these, these values here, then um, I see that I'm going to simplify to approximately 2. And if I did the same thing for a negative 10 million, I'm going to get roughly the same idea. 2 times negative 10 million minus 3 over uh, 10, a negative 10 million plus 1. Again, I'm going to be getting a negative number over a, another negative number, which will simplify to a positive number, which is going to be approaching positive 2 from the negative direction. So we're in roughly the right spot. So our horizontal asymptote is going to be at y equals 2. So we'll put y equals 2 here. We'll put x equals negative 1 there. So now we have to find our uh, x and y intercepts to determine are we purple or are we blue. So to find the x-intercepts is when y is equal to 0. So uh, x-intercepts, the x-intercepts are when y equals 0. So 0 equals 2x minus 3 over x plus 1. We saw in previous videos that when we multiply both sides by x plus 1, we're just left with 2x minus 3. So 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. Add 3 to both sides, divide by 2. So x is going to be 3 over 2. And then for my y-intercept, I'm going to be looking at when x is 0. So y is going to equal 2 times 0 minus 3 over 0 plus 1. So y is going to equal negative 3 over 1, which is negative 3. All right, so I've got a y-intercept at negative 3, let's say roughly right there. And I've got an x-intercept at positive 1 half, so right here. So it looks as though I'm going to have a the purple graph. So let's since that's our hypothesis, let's leave that in there. Let's move this purple over just a little bit, see if that's going to be the case. Maybe we even extend down a little bit. But how does this sine diagram work with this? How do we determine whether this thing is really what it is? Well, when we did our sine diagrams in the past, we found the important values for x. And here our important values for x seem to be uh, negative 1 
for our asymptote. Doot, 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 doot. So I'm going to put a negative one there. And it seems to be uh, at positive one and a half. So I'll put that in there, three over two. So what our sign diagram did, did is it said these are our x values, these are our y values or our g of x values. And our sign diagram said, hey, put some, put some values in in between these things and determine are you getting a positive or a negative result for this. So as we do that, uh, let's start with here. Let's start in the middle because I like putting zero into my function. Uh, that should make it nice and easy. So if I put zero in, well, I already actually did that and I came up with a negative value. So if I put zero into this function, I come up with a negative value. So this thing's going to be negative. And if I put uh, a, a number bigger than three halves into this function, if I, if I do that, I'm going to get a positive value, right? Here's a number bigger than three halves. So I'm going to be positive there. And then I also know if I put a number really, really small, a much smaller than negative one in, I'm also going to hit a positive value. So here's a little bit of a confirmation of what we've been doing. We know that we're getting a positive, negative, positive, and we know we've got an asymptote here. So here's our asymptote. All of these values are positive because they're all in the above the x axis. So these are all positive. And then we've got negative up to three halves. So we've got negative values all the way up to three halves. And then at that point, we go positive. So we've got positive values there. So if we've got a linear equation divided by another linear equation, which is where we cap out in the SL course, we don't look at a cubic or quadratic over a linear or anything like that. We always know that it's going to be some version of some kind of turn going either this way or this way. And then we're going to have one up here. They're always going to be kind of opposite of each other. So um, by doing this, we're kind of confirming that this is the case with all of the values that we just found. So it kind of uses all of those key values, the vertical asymptote, the horizontal asymptote, the x-intercept, the y-intercept. We can use all of those values to find are we truly positive or negative with our y values. And once we know that, we can then drop in our curves uh, wherever they may be. Again, you don't necessarily need to do the sign diagram because you could probably figure it out from the X and Y intercepts where you're going to be. But it's a nice little kind of check your work to make sure that you're on the right track. Because if I get something that's not lining up, I know I need to go back and revise and I, I need to change my work. So on an assessment, that's going to be a key check, a real quick key check if everything is working out properly. I hope that was helpful. If it was, make sure you give me a thumbs up, like the video, and I will talk to you in the next one.